Okay, now this first comment comes from New Yorker in MA. And he or she or they said, the maesters are the gray rats. Indeed. Like, I might be jumping the gun a bit with some of these scenes with Maester Melos and how he looks at Sir Otto Hightower and how they're basically plotting against King Viserys and the downfall of the dragons. I might be jumping the gun just a tiny little bit. But the gray rat theory is very much prevalent. In the main series of books, and it would actually make sense if George, you know, Ryan Kondo knows these books just as well as I do. Probably better, that's why he got the showrunner job, but, like, he knows his stuff, so he's incorporating things into this show so that it reflects on, uh, you know, events that happen in the, the main series. Like, the show kind of jumped that ship entirely with the maesters plotting behind the scenes to ultimately uh, try to make sure whoever they want is in power, right? The the show completely nixed that out. But Barbary Dustin is this lady who's talking to Broken Theon. Theon's known as Reek in Winterfell in some of the more recent Dance with Dragons chapters, right? So when I say recent, I mean towards towards the end, right, of the Dance with Dragons. Theon's showing Barbary Dustin this entire crypt of Winterfell. She wants to go pay her respect to some of the Starks. Mind you, she tells Theon, hey, I'm not letting Ned stay Dark's bones come back here and rest. I'm going to feed them to my dogs. But before she says that, she talks about how she was betrothed to another Stark. And now, you know, Catelyn and and, and Lysa Aaron and, 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 and Ned himself all festered in that. And, like, she's basically just really bitter, right? But she also tells Theon that the Maesters plotted for House Aaron and House Stark and House Tully to all join together. And one of the Maesters specifically was appointed there. Like, for instance, Maester Luwin was given the job at Winterfell because of his, his the amount of knowledge that he has in the arcane arts. It just so happens that every single one of the Stark children are wargs that they probably got from the blood of the First Men, right? So the Maesters are plotting, and in this show, I hope it's more of a thing. Thank you for that question, New Yorker in Maine, is what I'm assuming the MA stands for. Now, real quick, before I jump into the rest of the questions, please do me a massive favor and slap a like on this video. The like goal is going to be 1,420. I don't even think we'll get anywhere close to that, but if we, that that would just be awesome. Please slap a like on this. Remember, I've been mentioning a past couple of videos, YouTube is doing something called shadow banning my channel, which is basically they don't promote it at all in their algorithm, and it's not as though I'm making this up. I've provided proof, and I'm showing you it right now. So please, if you enjoy my content, just do me two simple things. Make sure you're subscribed, turn notifications on, and then and then, and then then slap a like on the video. Leave me a comment down below if you want to. I may even answer it in a future Q&A video. Long night! And thank you to every single member of my Patreon family over on patreon.com slash their hunts reviews. Now, the next question comes from a user named MDG underscore five. And they said, the scenes wouldn't be in fire and blood because the maestros, the, the maestros <laughs> weren't there who wrote it. LOL. Only told, only told tells about the story. George said that this would be the factual side of things because the books are written from the other perspectives who was clearly biased. Actually, no, George did not say that. George George has come out recently and said uh, that the show canon is just that, the show canon. Like, eventually, that's the goal. There's going to be book canon and show canon. So some of the stuff that the show reveals could potentially spill into the books, but it's not going to be quite the exact same. Uh, and this comment is in response to something that I mentioned in a more recent video of mine where I said that uh, a lot of these scenes that they're showing in the TV show between King Viserys and the Maesters and Sir Otto and Daemon and Rhaenyra didn't happen. They didn't happen in the books. And obviously, it's going to be expanded upon for this TV show. But I think this person kind of misunderstood my sentiment. I, I, I greatly appreciate most, if not all, of these added in scenes. I'm not complaining that they just weren't in fire and blood and they're not, you know, strictly strictly adapting it. I'm, I'm glad they're adding so many layers to each one of these characters. Uh, it, ma it just makes the most sense that you have this rich, developed person, whereas there's no POV in the books. So, potentially, uh, House of the Dragon has the, you know, the potential to be better in fire and blood by adding all of these different uh, things to the story. And the next comment 
Thanks you for that comment, MDG underscore five. The next comment comes from Ronald Burns, and he or she or they says, YouTube sucks. They're actively trying to destroy content creators and popping up massive corporations like MSNBC, CNN, etc. Keep doing what you do, SH, Sir Hunt. We will all keep watching and enjoying your content. Thank you, dude. Thank you. Like, I've gotten some really nasty comments from me saying that my channel's being shadow banned. Like, one idiot literally said, dude, you deserve to be shadow banned because your theories are stupid. How, how is a theory going to destroy really anything other than my own credibility and my knowledge in the fan base? Anyway, Ronald Burns' comments, comments like these make up for that shit. There's, 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 there's genuinely people who are just like, hey, you deserve to suck. You're going to keep sucking and you won't get any better. Like, there's actually people saying that, so... Yeah, I don't really have a response to it other than saying thank you for leaving such a positive comment like that. Like, I do realize that a lot of the massive videos on YouTube, you know, the ones that will get like billions and billions of views are news channels, right? So YouTube used to be about you, smaller creators, and the individual, but now, you know, all these celebrities started coming on and shit, and now all of these news corporations are just, I don't, they're not taking, they're not taking my jobs, they're not taking my views. But I understand the sentiment behind that. YouTube will promote those videos over the individual person, or just a big bigger channel in general that has a lot of people uh, working on it. They'll promote those videos actively more in their algorithm than channels like mine. Um, and continuing on here, the next question, thank you for that amazing comment, Ronald Burns. Um, the next comment comes from a user named Peach, and he or she or they said, I'm sorry, what? In the last episode, Viserys will be killed by whom? Aemon and his dragon, Vagar? You're telling me Aemon will intentionally kill his father? No. No, Peach. No. I, uh have a bit of an accent because I was born in Philadelphia, then when I was three I moved to Detroit, then I lived there until I was six, then from Detroit I moved all the way down to Washington DC, then I lived there until I was about eight or nine, then I moved to North Carolina. I lived in North Carolina from 1999 to about 2006, and then I went back to DC, Alexandria, Arlington for a year, then I came back to North Carolina, right, and then I had one more big move. I moved back to Philadelphia from 2009 to like 2010, 2011, and I've been where I'm at now in North Carolina ever since then. Long story short, I didn't say Viserys will be killed by whom. I said Lucerys will be killed by Vagar and Aemon. And that's not even a spoiler. <clears throat> I mean, it is, but it's like, it's in fire and blood. All of this information has been, you know, out f for four years. It's not like with the Game of Thrones books where, you know, up until season five and six, everybody's like, I know what's going to happen. The books, the books, right? Game of Thrones quickly outpaced the books. So no one knew what was going to happen, period. Fire and blood, it's not the case. But we do have one benefit, and that's that they're changing the story. So we don't necessarily know how it will, uh, the journey to get there, but we can kind of guess. So this was a really long time answering this question, but it was my accent that made you throw it off. But no, Vagar will kill Lucerys in the last episode of this season. And it's not a spoiler because it's literally been, you know, well talked about for years now. And then the last couple of comments that I want to address in this video at least, there will be more. Leave me comments down below asking me questions or just letting me know, hey, we like these kinds of videos, this kind of content, you're covering a broad range of subject matter, make more, right? So this next one comes from the Bio Explorer, and this is a, uh, used to be a patron of mine, longtime subscribers, now channel member, right? Just donating all the way up in the super chats, it's fucking amazing, thank you Bio Explorer. She says, did you see my post, the, on, uh, the other video about the bouncing egg? Watch the scene and keep your eye on the egg. And I'm showing you guys right now. They surprisingly had some discontinuity in the shots of Damon with with the egg. He keeps switching from his right to his left hand, and he, <laughs> he doesn't even toss it. I thought that was hilarious. It's like that's a little thing, right? It's not as bad as leaving a coffee cup in this in the actual scene. <laughs> thank you for that comment, Bio Explorer. It made me laugh. I really appreciate that. And thank you for your years and years of support. Listen, one of the last comments that I'm going to address in this video is from Matthew Buffington. And he or she or they says, I love how the intro looks. I hate that they just use the same music. They could have at least made an altered version, but really it needed its own music. That is why I'm disappointed. You could give me the same music, but make it more Targaryen-y, and I would have approved more. But the same exact melody? Lazy nostalgia graph. Yeah. Well, okay. I actually, uh, I, that was the one thing that I liked about the intro is like I, I said that like it's kind of boring. It's just a bl river of blood rushing into all the different crowns. Shahari's crown, we have Aegon's crown. It ultimately forms a Targaryen family tree and shows you that hey, 
this river of blood is about this show. It's called Fire and Blood. Everybody's going to die, right? But ultimately, they are, you know, Targaryens. Like that, The intro is going to expand as the episodes grow. Not just the episodes, but also the seasons. It's going to have heavily remodeled, reconstructed. They probably will eventually put a Targaryen-y type uh, Game of Thrones theme, like the one they used in the very first teaser for the show. Now, mind you, a headphone warning, cut your cut your volume down a little bit if you got this on your ear holes, because I'm about to hum it, right? Not hum it, but I'm going to sing it. Right? And then dragon wings and all that yeah i agree i uh i kind of agree like it does seem a little bit lazy but ultimately it's going to be added and expanded upon and i think this intro is just going to get better and better thank you for leaving me your comment your input and how you feel about the situation matthew buffington you fucking rock dude thank you for watching thank you for leaving a comment um and the very last comment that i'm going to address in this video is from a user named michelle richmond and he or she or they said what the hell you just gave massive spoilers without warning not cool um, now, there were a few comments responding to what Michelle said, but ultimately, if you want to get mad at somebody, get mad at Dan and Dave for one more thing. Get mad at Joffrey, all right? All the way back in Game of Thrones Season 2, or maybe Season 3, maybe even Season 4, Joffrey spoils the, the ending, the true last moment uh, most likely will be in one of the last episodes of the show, so get mad at him. Also... Ah, the Princess and the Queen came out in 2012. That's the, you know, kind of the basis for this story, right? The Rogue Prince around the same time. World of Ice and Fire came out in 2014. Told exactly what happens in this story pretty much, right? And then more was added to it, ultimately to be compiled in Fire and Blood Part 1, which was released in 2018. I'm not spoiling shit from here on out. Just, just, it's... I've read this story 17 times. As the seasons progress, not really 17 times, six times. I'm on my sixth reread slash re-listen. -re -re but, like, as the show progresses, uh, it's it's going to be impossible to differentiate the two of them. And, I, and, and it'll just be really hard to not spoil something. So just be prepared, Michelle Richmond. Anytime you click on a video that says plot leak or leaked scenes, or episode explained, or really any of my content, you're probably going to get one or two leaks from the books, or, or I'm sorry, one or two spoilers from the books, and the main reason why I say that is because it's literally really hard to avoid talking about that, and for the most part, uh, everybody watching these videos seems to enjoy when I talk about what happens in the books, so I don't know, you all let me know down below in the comment section right now, leave a fire emoji if you want spoilers, and then leave a stop emoji if you don't want any spoilers, or better yet, I'm going to say spoilers in the videos, I'll just give like a, a good, solid spoiler warning before saying anything, right, let me know down below. Thank you for watching. Please slap a like on this video, subscribe, make sure you have your notifications turned on if you enjoy my content and you want to help me uh, combat YouTube shadow banning my channel. I mean, the only way to get out of a shadow ban is to have traffic, um, comments, uh, YouTube views, new subscribers, all that blasted at your channels. Uh, at your channel for like a month or two or for like several weeks of hardcore, right? So when this show is on, this will help me get out of the shadow ban. So just share this on every single platform. Comment as many times as you want to down below. Rewatch it. Just just do any of that if you enjoy my stuff. I'm not I'm not telling you to do it. I'm, I'm asking you. So please, thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you to every single member of my Patreon family over on patreon.com slash hunts reviews. And thank you for watching. My name is Mark. Alone, not in South 3. I suppose the